Hi, this is John with SysEng Quick. Today, I'm going to show you how to deploy a highly available Kubernetes cluster using Ansible. My cluster will have three control plane nodes and two worker nodes. We're going to install K3S using Ketchup, and the control planes will be using etcd. Once the cluster is up, we'll install Rancher for our cluster GUI. The deployment should take around 10 minutes. In part one of this series, I built five VMs in my Proxmox using Ansible. I've torn those down so we can see how long it takes to deploy the cluster from scratch. It's okay if you haven't seen that video and you don't need Proxmox, but I wanted to automate everything. I have my dev container opened in VS Code. Let's start in cluster.yaml. The cluster nodes key is where we have our server and worker nodes defined. This is the minimum for a highly available setup, but this playbook should work even with a single server and no worker nodes. The node SSH user defines the user Ansible and Ketchup will use to connect to the nodes. Ketchup uses SSH key authentication and requires full root access. The cloud images we used to build our nodes use cloud init to set this up. Make sure your nodes have a similar configuration if you didn't follow my process. The last three keys are only relevant if you're using the Ansible Proxmox plays, so I'm going to ignore them here. Check out the previous video for more information about them. Note that I did rename Cluster Network to Proxmox Network so I could group and ignore these keys a bit easier in this video. If you made any changes, you'll need to regenerate the inventory. From the terminal, run python3 scripts slash update underscore inventory dot pi and press enter. Since I haven't made any changes, my inventory.yaml file will remain unchanged. There are two bash scripts, turn down and turn up. Turn down stops and removes all the nodes, so it's only relevant if you're using Proxmox. Turn up is a bit more relevant. Let's go ahead and start it now. Open the terminal and run time scripts slash turnup.sh. We'll redirect standard error to standard output and pipe everything to T in logs turnup.log and press enter. We'll come back to that in a bit. You'll want to comment out this first line of the script if you aren't using Proxmox as it's only used to create the Proxmox VMs. The next lines run the deploy K3S and deploy Rancher playbooks. Once the playbooks have completed, we check the rollout status for Rancher as that takes the most time. At the end, we run some cube control commands to check that everything looks functional. Let's take a look at the deploy K3S playbook. The first task is to run the deploy cluster task from the catch-up role in our collection on localhost. In deploy cluster, we run catch-up install to bootstrap the cluster on the first server node. Most of the arguments are straightforward. Since we're only controlling a single cluster here, the context argument is largely cosmetic. The catch-up connect arg is a template to use either hostname or IP address to connect to the node. The default is to connect by IP, but this can be changed in the role defaults. K3S extra args is passed to the server nodes. You can add additional configurations in the role defaults. kubevip conflicts with the built-in service load balancer from K3S, so the disable service load balancer flag is added automatically when kubevip is installed. In the role defaults, there is another option to enable an argument to prevent workloads from being scheduled on control plane nodes. It is disabled by default, but is a recommended best practice in production. The K3S TLS SAN argument 
adds the VIP to the TLS certificate for the API, but it's largely cosmetic. If kubevip is disabled, this argument will be left out. After every console command, we display the exact command run along with its standard output. I found this useful during testing, but you can disable it in the role defaults. Back in the deploy K3S playbook, the next play is run on the first server node. This is where we set up kubevip and kubevip cloud controller. Either or both of these tasks can be skipped by changing the role defaults. In setup kubevip tasks, we start by running cube control to apply the kubevip manifest. The next step is to pull the kubevip container. This will help us generate the daemon set manifest for kubevip. Then we use that container to generate the manifest and output it to a path where K3S will automatically load it. Now that our manifest has been applied, our virtual IP should be live on one of our control planes. If this node goes down, another node will acquire the IP and our API will remain available. This last task updates our local cube control config file that Ketchup created for us to use our new virtual IP. In kubevip cloud controller task, we apply the cloud controller manifest to deploy it on our cluster. We configure cloud controller by applying a config map. To maintain item potency, we pipe the config map into cube control apply. This is how we configure the range of IPs that cloud controller can assign to service load balancers. Back in deploy K3S, our last tasks are run on localhost to join the additional server and worker nodes to our cluster. Both add servers and add workers loop over a task file for each node in the cluster. We skip over the first server in the list because K3S is already deployed there. Both the add servers loop and add workers loop task run catch up join. The arguments are similar to what we used during the initial catch up install. When joining a new server, we add the server argument, and we don't supply K3S extra args to workers. That's the end of deploy K3S. So let's move on to deploy rancher. We run two tasks from the rancher role, deploy cert manager and deploy rancher. Rancher requires cert manager to generate certificates. We're going to use self-signed certs here, but you'd probably want to use a public certificate authority in production. We'll use Helm upgrade to install cert manager. Using upgrade rather than install is for item potency. If we used install, subsequent runs might get confused by things that are already installed. Using upgrade works around this problem, and nothing will be changed unless we change the version. In Deploy Rancher, we again use Helm Upgrade to deploy Rancher. The last task creates a service load balancer for Rancher. We're going to use Traffic Ingress instead, so these tasks won't be run here, but you can change that in the role defaults. Let's check in on our turnup script. Looks like it took just over 14 minutes, which includes the time it took to deploy our cluster node VMs. Let's take a look at the role defaults in Ketchup. Most of these should be fine for most people, but you may want to change a couple. Ketchup IP range is the range of IPs kubevip cloud controller will assign to load balancer services such as traffic. Make sure it's within your node's subnet and that DHCP won't assign them. Ketchup SSH key is used by Ketchup to connect to the nodes and install K3S. Make sure it matches the SSH private key you are using. Ketchup VIP is the virtual IP kubevip will use for your control plane nodes. Make sure it's in the same layer 2 domain as your nodes and that nothing else will use it, including DHCP servers. I'm going to skip over the other values here. You can open up an issue on the GitHub repo or leave a comment if you have questions. In the rancher defaults, there's really only one value that you'll probably want to change, 
and that's Rancher hostname, although you should be able to change it after installation. Speaking of which, let's see if our Rancher UI is up and running. Let's go to rancher.k3s.local.technoplaza.net and we have a self-signed certificate, so we're getting a warning, but it's okay because I know that and it's all right. It appears to be working. If we didn't know our password, we could use this to get the initial password. So we'll copy that and go back to our terminal. We'll run that command and you can see it gets us our bootstrap password, which is the same one we would have found in our defaults file. So let's copy that and go back to Rancher. We'll put the password in here and we'll say log in with local user. It's asking us to confirm our server URL. This is correct and I'll accept the end user license agreement and terms and conditions. Hit continue and let's go on to Rancher. Yeah, everything appears to be working. All of my nodes have four cores. We have five servers, so we do have 20 cores. We've got four gigs of RAM, so 19 gigs with rounding. This is the K3S version we installed. Click on the cluster and we can get more information in here. Go over to our nodes, and yeah, there's our nodes. We are a control plane, an etcd node for the first three servers, and worker nodes for our two workers. Everything appears to be working just fine. I hope this has been helpful. If it has, please hit those like and subscribe buttons. Thanks for watching.